a threat by the National Security Agency, meaning they, they think we all have to update our software. We've had the instance of a guy with the unlikely name of Ivan Strukov making his way back to Canada because he's being charged with um, a cyber attack on his own employer. And we've also had the incidents about WhatsApp being subject to surveillance. So that we can look at this topic, I've got with me today Steve Mayer of PGI. Steve, luckily, is an expert in cybersecurity. Thank you. What's all the fuss about, Steve? Um, well, first, if I'll maybe introduce myself and, yeah, and PJ, good idea. And, and then we can get into, into all of that. But yeah, um, so I've been a cybersecurity professional for 30 plus years. So in the very early days, we didn't call it security. It was called uh, Business Blocker, I think. Right. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I've basically worked within IT and risk management and cybersecurity throughout my, my working life. Um, PGI are a cybersecurity company. We um, basically help protect organizations through consultancy, um, typical cyber services like penetration testing, digital forensics, incident response management, etc. We also do training. So um, a number of our courses are certified through GCHQ, the government agency. Um, wow. And uh, the majority of our trainers are also the people who are doing the work. So for example, I'm one of the instructors on our cyber awareness courses, but I also do consultancy. So it means that we have people who are keeping their skills up to date all the time. Very good. Yeah. And this is what this is about. This is about absolutely. keeping our members' skills yeah. up to date. So, yeah, absolutely. So, we hear the term, and it's kind of a buzz term, yeah. but what does the term mean? So that's a, that's a very good question with no real answer. Right. Because, <laughs> because cyber is a term itself. Um, you can look at multiple definitions. The Oxford Dictionary gives a different definition to the Cambridge Dictionary, which gives a completely different definition to what Google gives you. Um, the way that I look at it is it's something to do with computers. Right. Yeah. So, so if we leave it at that, but also I'll, I'll stick my neck out and I'll say that the term cyber will disappear within the next five to ten years when we're talking about security. But presumably it's about computers and it's about accessing computers over the internet absolutely. and getting hands on yeah. data and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So what are the main risks or the main types of attack? So, so the, the main attacks, I think, we're, that we're all aware of. You'll have come across ransomware where a machine gets locked up because the, the files are encrypted and you have to pay some money to the bad guys and huh. they'll potentially unlock your device. Yeah. There's no guarantee that they will because even if they don't, how do you go, so how, you how do you go about getting them? And you don't know, are exactly. these good guys who will behave except, when you send the money? Except <laughs> for them, um, ransomware is all about business. Right. It's organized crime. So if it's all about business, one of the things that a lot of these organizations now do. You'll see it, um, it say, pay this amount of money in whatever currency it is, so it might be Bitcoin. If you want to know how to use Bitcoin, call this number or contact these people. They'll help you do that. Once you've finally unlocked your systems, they'll then direct you to um, a comparison site or a, a, a site where you can leave some kind of star rating for how well they performed. <laughs> no. Seriously, because they're a business. And what they want to be able to do is to say, um, understand you've got concerns about not being paid yeah. uh, or about your data not being unencrypted. Have a look at this site, all of these happy customers that have given us five stars because we've done what we said we would do when we gave the money. My goodness. Yeah, but there's no guarantee that they won't come back. So that's ransomware. That's ransomware. And that's some kind of virus that yes. locks up your machine on you. Absolutely, absolutely. And you can't ask us to access your data on the uh, these. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, and so it, it's very difficult, and it may affect just one machine, or it may affect every machine in your in your organisation. So um, the most famous one that we've probably all heard of is WannaCry, which hit yeah. back in uh, 2016. Um, and we saw that that hit multiple agencies across the world. Including uh, the NHS. Including the NHS. But I would like to point out that wasn't a targeted attack on the NHS. It was just that they happened to be particularly vulnerable right. because of their machines. And that is one of the, the things that we could talk about in a minute about how we can prevent these sorts of things from happening. Oh, okay. To us. So, uh, let's just cover a couple of the other ones. So phishing. Yeah. I, 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 so phishing. Um, yeah. Spelt with a PH is. Yes. Uh, our, our industry just loves acronyms and it loves weird terms. So phishing is basically um, sending an email and trying to get somebody to bite, trying yeah. to get somebody to respond to it. So we're all aware of the, the sort of general, um, you get an email which says, I'm a 
prints from a particular country and I can't get access to my data. If you reply, I'll pay you two million pounds and, and uh -huh. I can get my money back. Um, that's very generic sort of fish. Um, what the bad guys are also doing now, though, is they're making them more targeted at specific individuals. And this is what we call spear phishing, where they harvest information about you from places that you've left it deliberately. So it might be from your company website, uh, which says that you're the finance director. It might be from LinkedIn, which says this is the particular role that I'm in. Yeah. It might be from your Twitter account or from Facebook or wherever that may or be. Or possibly your bank. Or possibly your bank. Unlikely, but they might do some digging around that. And they'll find out information about you and they'll craft an email that is specifically about you, which will encourage you to click on the link. Yeah. Um, added to spear phishing, there's a smaller category where they go after the big fish. So the execs within the organization, and we call that whaling, because they're big <laughs> fish. Um, and, and that brings us to one of the more common types of, of crime that we're now starting to see. And it's been prevalent for the last 18 months to two years, um, called mandate fraud or CEO fraud, where um, an email purportedly from one of the C-suite to perhaps the finance director, uh, the email will say, uh, I'm just about to go into an important meeting. Can you pay this money to this account as soon as possible? It has to happen today and I'm not contactable. <laughs> yeah. Um, there have been organizations have been caught with that and some of them have lost millions of pounds. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's really common, for example, within banking, within finance institutions, and um, also within solicitors, particularly on a Friday. Oh. Because on a Friday is when most people are going to complete their purchases. Yes, yeah, they're all busy. And, and so they're all busy. There's a lot of money sitting in the solicitor's account. And so the bad guys can target them and try and get that money. And I know of at least a couple of uh, instances where that's happened. And of course, it's not just the people who are buying the houses, but their families and the families in the rest of the tra chain that are affected. So it's, it's quite a, a horrible thing to happen. Yeah. Now, um, so... I guess it helps to be alert to the different yes. kind of th risks, but what can one do about them? So um, I'm a very firm believer in keeping things simple. Do the simple yeah. things well. So that means patch your systems. Keep it up to date. Keep it up to date. Run uh, up to date antivirus software and make sure that your antivirus software That's is That's the Norton's is scanning. and whatever That's else. Norton, Symantec, McAfee, all of that sort yeah. of thing. Make sure that those are scanning your data on a regular basis, make sure that they're being kept up to date. Make sure that your operating systems are kept up to date. Mm. Now, one of the, the instances that you mentioned in your introduction, uh, where Microsoft have recently issued a patch for a, is a variant called Keep Blue. Yeah. Um, Microsoft, for only the second time, they've taken the, the step of issuing a patch for Windows XP and servers, Server 2003, both of which are no longer supported by Microsoft. And that is because the risk is so great to organizations that they need to patch those. Some people are still using those outdated operating systems for good reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, if you can make sure that you're running supported operating systems, make sure that they're patched, make sure that their antivirus software is up to date. Um, I also like to look at privileged account management, so restricting the number of people who have got access to, if you like, super user level on all accounts. Yes. And the final bit and the most important bit really is around education and training for people. So if people are alert, that people must limit the risk. Absolutely, absolutely. So people are aware. Um, the training side of things has got to be much more than a tick box exercise. The whole reason for organizations to do training is, um, shouldn't be just because a regulator says you need to do training, but it should be there to help people modify and change their behavior. And, and so if you make the, the training pertinent, if you make it relevant to the organization, if you make it relevant to the individual, what you're looking to do is to improve their behavior, tell them what to look for. So what does a, sus a suspect phishing email look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Is it just a case of the, the email address is slightly dodgy? Is it a case of the language used in the email, you know, there's bad punctuation, there's bad English, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I know people who, who English is their first language and they're written English is really poor, so it's not always a, it's not always an indication. We was good at it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so it is around training your employees and training your staff to make sure that they are aware um, what to look, look out for and how to be wary of it. And isn't it true to say that 
attacks are going to get through anyway. Yes. Part of risk management is about being able to respond. Absolutely. So I think that there's the, the uh, maxim within our uh, industry, which is um, there are two types of people in the world, um, those whose organisations have been hacked and those who don't know they've been hacked. Um, it's pretty much a given that nearly every organisation globally will have been infected and attacked at some point. Um, and the main reason for that is everybody has something that is worth something to somebody else, whether that's just data, whether it's information on somebody, or whether it's being used as a stepping point in an attack on a much bigger supplier, so perhaps you're part of a supply chain, mm -hmm. it's looking to access larger organisations or partners, etc. And some of these attackers are just malicious, aren't they? Yes, yeah. so, so some of the attacks are done just to break systems. Um, more often than not, it's, uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, Organised crime are doing it because data is money, and so uh, the more data they can steal, the more money they can earn. Right. Uh -huh. So we would argue that the management account of the business you know, should be bringing professional objectivity, should be, be bringing global awareness to these things, yeah. and that they've got a role to in risk management. Absolutely. So, so, and part of that role is to make sure that um, they take part in the training, don't view it as just a tick box. Try to understand what the issues are, try and understand what it is that you're trying to protect against. Make sure that you're alert and that you're aware of the risks. And again, going back to phishing, um, and the reason why I'm harping on about it is because phishing is um, such a, a common method of attack. Mm -hmm. um, the bad guys are using our own human instincts and uh, desire to help against us. So the reason why phishing emails come in at you and they're targeted to say, you need to respond now, it has to happen now, please help. You know, we are conditioned to want to help people. We are conditioned to um, respond when somebody says something's urgent. So when you get an email and you think it looks a bit dodgy, report it to somebody, talk to your IT team, talk to whoever supports your IT, but also take a step back take a breath and think, is this for real? Do I really yeah. need to respond to it now? You need a bit of professional cynicism. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. If yeah. it seems too good to be true, it almost certainly it probably is. probably is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been really good. Thank you very much. Excellent. No uh, problem at all. Thank you. Thank now, you for having if, me. Um, the, the viewers want to find out more, you'll find more details at the bottom of the screen and we'll be having more content in this area. Thank you very much. Thank you.